congenital anomalies of the kidney. Embryology Normal embryologic development of the kidney occurs in three stages. Of note, in this discussion, embryonic age begins at conception and not at the last menstrual period. Pronephros Transient rudimentary and non-functioning system that begins in the fourth week of embryogenesis, that is, day 22, and disappears by the end of the fourth week, that is, day 28. Degeneration of the pronephros is required for normal kidney development. Mesonephros is derived from the intermediate mesoderm by day 26 and by the fifth week of embryogenesis develops into 20 paired tubules that produce small amounts of urine. The mesonephros ultimately fuses with the cloaca and contributes to the formation of the urinary bladder, and in the male, the genital system is derived from the mesonephric ducts and some tubules. Metanephros the metanephros, which is composed of the metanephric mesenchyme and ureteric bud epithelium, caudal portion of the mesonephric duct, is the last stage of renal development and forms the permanent kidney beginning at the fifth week of embryonic age. The metanephros is the final stage of renal development. It is first detected at five to six weeks of embryogenesis and begins to function at 6 to 10 weeks, with urine production beginning at 9 weeks of embryonic age. The metanephros is initially positioned in the pelvis opposite the sacral somites and migrates from its caudal position, reaching its permanent location in the lumbar region at the 8th week of embryogenesis. Reciprocal interactions between the metanephric mesenchyme, which is the metanephros, and the ureteric epithelium induce organogenesis, resulting in the formation of the nephrons and collecting duct system of the metanephric system. This process is dependent on the co-expression of a number of signaling and transcription factors, including, but not limited to, glial cell line derived neurotrophic factor and cognate receptor complex RET or GFRA1 OSR1 EYA1 ISL1 FOXC1 PAX2 PAX8 GATA3 LIM1 GDF11 SALL1, SIX1, BMP4, and WT1. The bladder develops from a separate but continuous structure termed the urogenital sinus. The bladder is present in fetuses with renal agenesis but is empty because of absent urine production. Potter phenotype Potter phenotype is caused by the Potter sequence occurring sequentially. Bilateral renal agenesis leading to failure of fetal renal excretion leading to oligohydramnias resulting in decreased amniotic fluid leading to multiple anomalies which is the Potter phenotype and early death. The Potter sequence phenotype is associated with P for pulmonary hypoplasia, O for oligohydramnias, T for twisted face, T again for twisted skin, E for extremity defects, R for renal failure in utero. Oligohydramnias fails to provide the fetus with adequate amniotic fluid necessary to mature the lungs, leading to pulmonary hypoplasia with severe respiratory failure and early neonatal death. Common deformations observed in Potter sequence phenotype include facial deformities, for example, Potter facies, flattened parrot beak nose, low set ears, micronathia, limb deformities, for example, rocker bottom feet, 
Talipes equinoveris. Oligohydromnias allows contact of fetal skin with amnion, creating amnion nodosum, which are nodules of fetal squamous epithelial cells on the placental surface. Maternal abdominal ultrasonography may detect bilateral renal agenesis during the prenatal period. Potter's phenotype can also be caused by autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, posterior urethral valves. Horseshoe kidneys Horseshoe kidneys occur when the right and left kidneys fuse. 90% are fused at the inferior pole, whereas 10% are fused at the superior pole. Horseshoe kidneys become trapped under the inferior mesenteric arteries at vertebral level L3. Patients with horseshoe kidneys have normal renal function. Horseshoe kidneys may compress ureters, potentially causing ureteral pelvic junction obstruction, hydronephrosis, renal stones, and infection. Horseshoe kidney is associated with the following chromosomal aneuploidy syndromes. Edwards syndrome, Down syndrome, Patau syndrome, Turner syndrome. Horseshoe kidney can rarely be associated with renal cancer, especially Wilms tumor. Ectopic kidneys are most commonly found in the pelvis. Ectopic kidneys can be located anywhere along the path of their ascent from where they first form in the pelvis to where the kidneys normally lie within the abdomen in the retroperitoneal renal fossa, level of second lumbar vertebra. The ureteral pelvic junction is the last portion of the developing ureter to canalize. Thus, the ureteral pelvic junction is the most common site of obstruction during fetogenesis leading to hydronephrosis. Multicystic dysplastic kidney. Multicystic dysplastic kidney occurs due to an abnormal interaction between ureteric bud and the metanephric mesenchyme. Multicystic dysplastic kidney renders the affected kidney non functional. Gross examination of a multicystic dysplastic kidney shows a kidney composed of macroscopic cysts compressing dysplastic renal parenchyma composed primarily of connective tissue. Most patients with multicystic dysplastic kidney have unilateral disease, which is asymptomatic. Patients have compensatory hypertrophy of the contralateral or non-dysplastic kidney. Patients with bilateral multicystic dysplastic kidneys have no renal function, resulting in oligohydromnias and Potter's syndrome. Bilateral multicystic dysplastic kidney disease is incompatible with life. Multicystic dysplastic kidney is often associated with an atretic proximal ureter. Multicystic dysplastic kidney is most often diagnosed via prenatal ultrasound. Duplex collecting systems. Duplex collecting system is a condition in which two ureters drain a single kidney. The most common congenital anomaly of the urinary tract. Duplex collecting system can arise via two etiologies. The ureteric bud, the embryologic origin of the ureter, can bifurcate before it enters the metanephric blastema. Alternatively, duplex collecting system can arise when two ureteric buds reach and interact with metanephric blastema. Duplex collecting system is associated with vesicoureteral reflux, ureteral obstruction often due to a ureteral seal, urinary tract infections. Duplex collecting system is most often diagnosed via prenatal ultrasound, which often shows hydronephrosis of the affected kidney due to vesicoureteric reflux. If a duplex collecting system isn't diagnosed in utero, children can present with recurrent urinary tract infections. 
Congenital solitary functioning kidney. Congenital solitary functioning kidney describes patients that are born with a single functioning kidney. Most patients are asymptomatic. Hypertrophy of functioning kidney may be seen on imaging. Anatomical congenital solitary kidney is the absence of one kidney due to renal agenesis. Functional congenital solitary kidney is a non-functional kidney due to reasons such as renal aplasia, severe renal dysplasia, or hypoplasia. A solitary kidney is usually hypertrophic to compensate for the contralateral kidney. There will be increased risk of hypertension, renal insufficiency, and progression to end-stage renal disease. Renal agenesis. It refers to a congenital absence of the kidney and ureter, which may either be unilateral or bilateral. Renal hypoplasia can also lead to absence of kidney and is commonly referred to as renal agenesis. In the absence of in utero intervention, bilateral renal agenesis is always fatal to the newborn period. The diagnosis of bilateral renal agenesis is based upon sonographic non-visualization of the fetal kidneys, ureters, and bladder accompanied by oligohydromnias, usually after 16 weeks of gestation. Unilateral renal agenesis is more difficult to diagnose and depends upon accurately excluding the presence of a second kidney in the renal fossa or in an ectopic location. Renal agenesis is associated with an increased risk of other structural abnormalities, copy number variants, single gene disorders, and chromosomal abnormalities. For pregnancies with unilateral renal agenesis, a thorough examination for other structural defects, especially of the reproductive tract, should be performed. If additional anomalies are detected, there is an increased risk of chromosomal abnormality. Amniocentesis to determine the fetal karyotype should be offered. There are no fetal indications for early delivery. Most cases of bilateral renal agenesis are sporadic. The risk of recurrence of bilateral renal agenesis is about 3-6% but may reach up to 8% in cases with multiple congenital abnormalities. Approximately 9-14% of first-degree relatives of patients with bilateral renal agenesis or dysgenesis have renal abnormalities. Clinicians suggest performing renal ultrasound examination to screen parents and siblings of infants born with agenesis or dysgenesis of both kidneys, or with agenesis of one kidney and dysgenesis of the other given the heritable nature of these defects. The prognosis for patients with unilateral renal agenesis is reported as excellent with a survival rate similar to that of age and sex-matched controls. However, some data suggests an increased risk of renal dysfunction, proteinuria, and hypertension, and a high risk for dialysis.